Hey guys, John here from the Cleaver Today Show. Before we start today, I just wanted to let you know that this episode was originally recorded for February the 13th, the day before Valentine's Day. But in light of the comments made by Alistair Begg, we recorded a special show. A lot of you guys already listened to it. Thank you for your support. We want to go ahead and jump into the show. we got a great show for you today. But just know that it was originally recorded for the 13th and not for today. That said, enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. Today is Tuesday, February the 13th. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. And you're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abaddon Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions for Dr. Shah or suggestions for new topics, send us a text at 252-582-5028, or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. That's right, and you guys can help us keep the conversation moving forward by supporting the show. You can share it online with your friends and your family. You can leave us a good five-star review on iTunes or Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasting content from. We're going to leave a couple of links in the description so you can do just that. The verse of the day today comes from Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. You know, we want to be established in our faith. What exactly does that mean? Does that mean we never make mistakes or we just establish ourselves, we root ourselves, as it says, and that we never have to change? Of course, that's not what it's saying. It's saying that you are so secure in your salvation. You are so secure in, in the blessed assurance that Christ has given you that now you have the freedom to grow. You know what I mean? You have the freedom to bloom where you're planted as as you know, Dr. Shaw would say. Yeah, and it's a daily thing. Notice there it says in the middle of the verse, so walk in him. That's it's right. not just one step. It's not a one-time thing. You are daily walking in him. And sometimes we're going to take steps off that path. Sometimes we're going to take steps backward. Sometimes we're going to just be at a standstill. But the goal is that we would continually be growing, continually be moving forward in our walk with God. That's right. Everything is changing around us, man. Everything is changing around us. The world that we grew up in in the 90s, I grew up in, in uh, 92, it's not the same world no more. Lots and lots of things changing. I'll tell you one thing that remains the same. Mm -hmm. It's Tuesday. And you know on Tuesday what we do. I know what it is. You know what we do. I know what time it is. It's time for the grapevine. Welcome to the grapevine, everybody. Doink. Doink. Before we gripe, I do want to say, look at these clean, clear know, look, view today nice? mugs. Look Coffee at them. Isn't that mug. nice? Peep that mug. Yeah, we, we, did, mug. we had these on a look couple the, of the videos. I don't know if you can see it from the camera, but the inside is blue. Yeah, check it out. Blue. The inside is blue. I, t- I tilt it towards you, but then I would spill check my tea. Check this out. You want to see how, t- how, how good it makes the coffee sound? I'm going to show you. Oh, that was lots of slurping noises oh, in someone's headphones. Yeah. Sorry about that. So there's some people probably writing into the show asking, where can I get one of these clean, clear view today mugs? Well, buddy boy, they're not on sale yet. But maybe they will be soon. They will be soon. These, this one's just for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Time for the gripe vine. I'm, that, my, that was not the gripe. That the gripe was the gripe. not no, the, the I'm, coffee mugs. I'm pretty Love chuffed those. and cheesed about the mugs. Um, I, I got bad eyes. I wear glasses. Ryan wears glasses. I do. We, we can't see good. Our and eyes don't My work. eyes especially, like I have not problems, but it's harder at night too. The Lord has created us in his image, right? But because of the but fall. But because of the fall, my <laughs> eyes have fallen. I can't see. My eyes are sinful. So the doctor, the eye doctor actually told me that I, by the time I'm like 40, maybe in my mid-40s, I probably will not be able to drive at night. And really? I was like, That's kind of extreme, right? Wow. And you I know mean, who's I might, not, I might be right there with you. You know who's not making it any easier? People with big, bright Blue headlights. Oh my goodness. Why do y'all I do that? I can't stand it. Why do y'all do I that? I hate it. The, so, first and foremost, if your headlights are too bright, like if you're driving big trucks, uh, go ahead and, and just know that even your low beams are are kind of a much. Don't put the high beams on and blind it right in my face while I'm driving. There there are some headlights that are just naturally brighter than mm-hmm. others. And I'm not telling you not to have headlights where you can't see. Obviously, you need to be able to see, but you don't need to be able to see like the next county. Some people just don't even, they're like, oh, I didn't even know. I didn't even know my headlights. Yes, you did. Yes. yes, you did. When you swapped out the ones that came with your vehicle for new upgraded headlights, you knew. What yeah, you and doing. you and you like, you put your high beams on and suddenly you can see so clearly that you, like, you can see the future unfold before you. <laughs> you know exactly that your headlights are too bright. You're shining it right into other people's if face. If your headlights are bright enough that you can see tomorrow, that's too much. Also, why are some headlights blue now? What's up with the like? I know, it hurts my what's eyes. What's up with like the, the cool lighting? 
<laughs> it hurts my eyes and it comes up but very nice. It comes up behind the car and it fills both the side view mirrors and the the rear view mirror. So I've had like, like bright headlights reflected at me when you're behind me. I always think it's I a don't cop. Like it. I always yeah. think it's a cop for some reason. Yeah. I don't know. The the bright headlights are just too much because already nobody likes driving at night. It's, yep. it's nighttime. We're tired. We want to go home. But yep. then you got these big, bright headlights. And I don't know what's worse, when they're coming towards me or when they're behind me. Because at least when they're coming towards me, I know, all right, they're going to pass me here in a second. I flash the lights out. I'll be like, hey, I flash the lights. Sometimes I beep the horn, but then I get scared. But here's the thing, though. like, not, Sometimes it's not even their high beams. That's just their regular lights. So there's nothing they can do about it. Yeah. It's just like, beep, bop along. <laughs> it's, just, it, it's just a lack of self-awareness. That's my gripe for the week, bright yeah. headlights. And if you're listening and you're someone with bright headlights, I mean, I'm, I'm griping about you. And don't please, mean I don't like you. And please don't drive behind me. Yeah, don't drive behind me, man. Don't, don't see please my, don't clear, do that. my little clear view today sticker and be like, oh, that's John. I'm going to blind him on John, the road. John and I are in our 30s, okay? We're, we're on the road to... Poor eyesight later in life. We Just already don't help us. Don't help I us get there faster. Can't see good. I can't see good. My old bones, they're brittle, man. My eyes, they're not what they used to be. I thought <laughs> you were going to say your eyes were brittle. <laughs> they're brittle like this. Like That's peanut a problem. Brittle. When I blink, little flakes fall oh, out. Oh, no. <laughs> Something like scales fell from his eyes. <laughs> you know, Pastor John's got a big truck. I bet his headlights are pretty blinding. I bet he. Yeah, but I don't know that he has the same kind of headlights. Let's check in with him and see what, he, uh, what his feelings are on headlights. I wonder if it's like, if this is a thing that's unique to America or if. There are headlight problems in he India. He drives as well. so infrequently. Like every time I ride with him, David or Nicole drives. At least in the van. I don't really yeah. drive in his truck. His much truck. Anymore. His truck isn't. I feel like super offensive as far as are lights the fifteen go. passenger vans that we drive. Are they? Do they got really bright headlights? No. 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 no they're just normal. I got you. Just normal headlights. Yeah. Write in and let us know what your take is on the headlights. Write in and let us know if you're one of the people who has bright headlights and give us a defense. Give us a reason why. If we can hear a reason why, maybe we'll relent from the. Yeah, that's the other thing. Like like with big souped up trucks, it's like why. What re, what does it serve you? Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't look good. It's loud. Everybody hates it. That's a, that's its own gripe, but it, it just serves no purpose. Defend your headlights to us. I'll give we'll give you the opportunity <laughs> to do that. Write in, let us know two five two five eight two five zero two eight, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey there, listeners. I'm John Galantis. And I'm Ellie Galantis. And we just want to take a quick second and talk to you about Dr. Shaw's and Nicole's book, 30 Days to a New Beginning, daily devotions to help you move forward. You know, this is actually the second book in the 30 Days series. And the whole point of this devotional is to help us get unstuck from the ruts of life. You know, when it comes to running the race of life, it matters how you start, but a bad start doesn't ultimately determine how you finish the race. You can have a good finish even with a bad start, and that's where this book comes in. No matter who you are or where you are in life, you're going to get stuck. Instead of going out and buying some gadget or some planner, like I know I've done several times. I know that's right. 30 Days encourages you to find your fresh start in God's Word. Life doesn't have a reset button, but our God is a God who does new things. His mercies are new every day, which means every day is a new chance for you to start over. You can grab 30 Days to a New Beginning on Amazon.com. We're going to leave a link in the description box below. And if you already have the book, let us know what you think about it. That's right. Send us a text, 252-582-5028. Share what God has done in your life through this devotional. Hey, maybe we'll even read your story on the air. Ellie, you ready to get back to the show? Let's do it. All right. Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028. That's right, and we're here today in the Clearview Today studio with Dr. Abadan Shah, who is a PhD in New Testament textual criticism. All these bright lights in the studio, man, it's just got me thinking about what we were talking about earlier today. Dr. Shah, you have been driving at night? Yes. And <laughs> and someone just flashes them big, bright, 18-wheeler headlights yeah, they right just, into your face. I can't stand And it. you just do that like little mini panic, like, ah, oh, oh, I've seen the well, light. What I get a lot, because I, I have a Nissan Titan mm-hmm. truck, is people will uh, flash the lights at me to get them to lower it. I'm like, it's already lowered. It's on the yeah. low beams already, but it's you on just, high. You're just too low to the ground. Yeah. That's the problem. What can I do for that, buddy? Yeah. So sometimes I'll flash them back, and then they <laughs> keep it down as they drive back. Uh. <laughs> 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 Sorry. We didn't mean it. Sorry. That's a good. That's a good point. I didn't think about the the having that big truck. I've always driven 
little I, I drove Jeeps, but now I've got right. like a little uh, Volkswagen Tiguan. So there's yeah. there's something to be said for like, you know, bright headlights and being able to see. I get all that, but there are some some headlights that people install that it's like you can see 92 miles down the road and possibly the future. What do you th yeah, what do you think about like the headlights that are like just bluish in color? Like this that like bluish white that sticks out. It's odd. It just yeah. it bothers yeah. me. Yeah. It's weird. But but if you have it, hey, it's all good. A why? <laughs> like I mean, you can have it. It's you can fine. have it, but write in and let us know why. <laughs> well, what purpose is it? Like does it make you? you see better? Is I guess it's like warm light versus cool light, you I know? guess. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, well, yeah, I got nothing to say. <laughs> Let's talk about love. <laughs> Impossible to segue from headlights into love. But we are talking about love today because we're getting close to Valentine's Day. That's right. Valentine's Day is did you tomorrow. Get your, did you get your wife anything? I did. Did you get your wife something, Dr. Shaw? Uh, I will. I haven't got nothing either. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got nothing yet. I did. Well, you know, Valentine's Day is something that people, you know, sometimes people roll their eyes at it. They're like, it's just a commercialized holiday and blah, 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 blah. Another reason for you to spend money. Right, yeah. exactly. Broke, broke people say that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or single people. Or single people, uh, yeah. But, you know, Valentine's Day is an opportunity for us to to celebrate love, and love is one of those good gifts that God gives us. Absolutely. You know, sometimes people think that all God cares about is our salvation. Mm. Once He saves us, He doesn't care, and He just wants you to go out there and, and live the best of your life, and then one day go to heaven. Yeah. You know, hey, you're not going to hell. Right. What more do you want? Right. <laughs> but I don't think that's how it is. God cares about things. He cares about... The rest of life, mm -hmm. like relationships. He cares about, even since we're talking about Valentine's Day, he cares about who you find as your um, significant other, mm -hmm. your spouse, mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. Yeah, it's funny because I, I've always heard people say, you know, who you met, who you marry, as long as they, they are a Christian, it's all good. Mm -hmm. And and God, all God cares about is that they're, they're a believer. But right. think about how little thought that takes right you know like right. like god's really going to be like you know what as long as they're a christian doesn't matter if you're compatible doesn't matter if you get along doesn't matter if you see the world eye to eye just make sure they're a christian yeah it's like i don't see god taking that cavalier of an attitude of how we actually live our life right. God doesn't act that way about anything else right he's, he's a god of order and he's a god of you know he's outside of time he plans he's sovereign over everything so for him to just be like eh, just pick a christian like that doesn't that doesn't yeah. translate. But I've heard right. that, though. I've heard people even tell me that when I was young, when I was looking for a girl, they were like, all that other stuff doesn't matter. All that matters is that she's a Christian. I'm like, I mean, I agree that's important, but shouldn't I like her? Yeah. Should, <laughs> should we yeah. get along? Should yeah. we have fun? Should yeah. we not have a fulfilling life? Yeah. If you want. If you want, but God yeah. doesn't care about it. Oh, it'll all stuff. come to you. It'll yeah. all happen. Yeah. yeah. And that's not true. Right, right. Well, I wanted to talk about it a little bit today as we're going towards uh, Valentine's Day because I think it's something that people still in 2024 struggle with. Right. I mean, I guess you're always going to struggle with relationships. Right. It's never, never going to be a solution to that. Well, the passage that comes to my mind uh, is that about God caring about our relationship is Romans 8.32, mm. uh, where Paul says, He who did not spare his own son... Uh, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Mm. Now think about that. Freely give us all things, mm -hmm. and in the all things, I believe there's also the relationship yeah. we want for life. And so, yes, God cares about relationships, and he wants the best for us. Yeah, He does. I think what 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 helps me is knowing that God really wants to draw us closer to himself and he doesn't want just me. You know, yeah. he wants every part of my, my spouse, yeah. my kids, mm -hmm. my family, um, being drawn closer into him and, and letting my marriage get to be part of that. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Rather than be like, all right, I want you to draw close to me, your marriage, all that stuff. It's yours to manage mm -hmm. rather. And, and that's up to you to kind of manage that, but don't forget me. I think it, it hel has helped me to say that all, my marriage is, and my family, all that is drawn in at the same time. Right. It's all drawn in together. That's right. That's yeah. right. Well, let's go back and look at it, because the first relationship happened because God uh, saw something that was missing yeah. in the man's life. That's true. In Genesis uh, chapter 2, 18, And the Lord said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Mm. It is not good. Now, seven times God said, it is good. Right. It is good. And then it is this one time God said, it is not good. Yeah. That's the, is that the first time that he said that it's not oh, good? Oh, yeah. Wow. First time. Very first time. Seeing, seeing Adam, you know, he has the garden, he has the world, he has animals, 
and yet there's something missing in his life. And the something was companionship. Yeah. On an equal level. The animals didn't do it. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you can chase that monkey around for only five, <laughs> so yeah. long. You can swim with the dolphins, but so long. It's eventually, it's just not cutting it. It's not cutting it. Yeah, it's like, just like, my man needs something else. Something else. This, yeah. this dude is lonely. He, he, needs, he needs somebody who's like him. And I, I also like that it wasn't like, Adam, go find it. Yeah. You know, yeah. go find it and report back to me and I'll give you the seal of approval. Right. Isn't it funny? We kind of treat dating like that, like especially Christian dating, where like, I'm going to go find someone, I'm going to pray about it, bring it to God and be like, God, yeah. is this? Yeah. yeah. See this? if I get the stamp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's not quite like that. In fact, God, as you know, put him in a deep sleep. The Bible tells us in verse 21. And um, he took one of his sides, not really ribs, but something from his cella, from his side. Mm-hmm. And from that, he made for him, made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And so God created the solution for Adam's loneliness. Mm. That's a, I think that's a part of life that we don't really talk about a lot. Yeah. You know, we talk about people being lonely, hmm. especially, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's like a, a Christian thing or just a, a man thing, but there, I feel like there's just people out there who are lonely and we just don't talk about it because, you know, they're lonely, you know, they're not, they're not going to get out there and, and talk about how lonely they are. They're just going to dwell in loneliness. I, I don't know if I'm making sense. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. Seems, it seems like, you know, with, with men, it's sort of this, you need to be responsible for yourself. Right. You you are on your own. You don't rely on anybody. You right. are the one. You're it. Um, and then if you add a Christian element to it, there's almost this push where it's like you don't need other people. It's it's your relationship with God. Right, right. So that's sort of like a, a, a two-handed punch in the wrong direction. Right. When God didn't create us to be alone, God didn't right. create us. It, I mean, in fact, here, the first time God says it's not good is because the man is alone. Right. Yeah. God created us for companionship. It's almost like we think that as, as men specifically that our marriage is something additional we have to juggle, you know? Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. Like we have to make that fit into my personal life. Yeah. But actually it's a gift. Right. Yeah. Right. Marriage yeah. is a gift. Mm-hmm. Not not something to like you said, I gotta take care of this problem right. now. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's funny, we do we do tend to treat marriage like that sometimes. Yeah. And I think it just comes from this getting away from what God originally intended it to be. Yeah. And Adam's response should be our response. Mm. His response when he saw Eve was this is now Bone of my bones and flesh of my fe- flesh, which means she has the same musculoskeletal structure. She is not like some animal. Right. She is like me. Mm-hmm. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. In a sense, she's like me, but she's also um, different from me. Mm-hmm. That's a big yeah. source of contention these days. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. He yeah. didn't need another... Adam. Right. Yeah. Somebody to go rock climbing with yeah, and hang out yeah, with right. and throw darts at yeah, them. No, that's not what he needed. He needed somebody who was like him and yet different from him in some very important uh, in important ways. Yeah, some very obvious ways too. And and those differences God made for a reason. Right. And here in twenty twenty four we are doing everything we can to negate those differences. Yeah. We're doing neutralize those yeah. differences. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that we're somehow more equal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when you start really yeah. looking at it, if it, it all kind of falls apart. It's not even it's not even equality. It's sameness. Yeah, yeah. it's it's just erase all distinction, no uniqueness. It's yeah. just sameness. Yeah, where I don't know what world we're becoming into, but it's for other than being sinful and ungodly, it's also a bland, weird, yeah, dark world. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that doesn't bring any joy, other than perversion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all it's bringing. Yeah. And if perversion is bringing you some kind of joy, then something is broken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're wrapping up perversion in false value. Mm-hmm. Not, fa- not false value, false virtue. False yeah. virtue. Yeah, uh-huh. and we're, we're passing it off as though it's virtuous and it's kind-hearted and it's inclusive, when really it's just perversion that's yeah. made up to look really nice. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And just the way God cared about Adam... And his loneliness, God also cares about us. That's true. And again, I want to cl- clarify, there may be people listening today who are called or feel called by God to singleness. Mm. This is not for a single moment, no pun intended, mm-hmm. meant to say, hey, if you are single, then something's wrong with you. Mm-hmm. 
No, of course not. If God's called you to that, then I promise you, you'll be unhappy if you get into a relationship. That's true. So stay as you are, do what God's called you to do, and be happy. Mm -hmm. But if God has not given you that calling, then pray that God will bring somebody good in your life. I feel like we, I feel like, (laughs) I don't know why this is, but Christians neglect to pray for the right partner, you know, the right person. Like, I I can't remember, like, God still blessed me with a great wife, but I don't remember ever being, I'm sure I did at some point, but I don't remember ever being like, God, send me the right woman. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, he, like, even in that neglectfulness, he was still great, gracious to me. Yeah. But um, I just feel like we don't do that. I prayed for, for a good wife. Yeah. I, uh, Nicole prayed for a good husband. Um, Her parents prayed for a good husband. My parents prayed for a good wife. I mean, so we, as as uh, parents, have prayed for all four of our kids mm-hmm. that yeah. God will bring the right man or right woman in their lives, and um, we believe so far it's happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we we thank God for that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can see the success of those prayers and, mm-hmm. and how huge of a role prayer actually plays in yeah. in finding that person. You know, that's also a biblical concept, by the way. Yeah. yeah. I th- I. I wonder why people feel guilty almost to pray for a spouse or even even take prayer into a dating relationship. Right. It feels like there's like a, a reluctance to, like, I don't want to pray for a, a dating relationship that feels there like There are some bigger things out there like saving the world and yeah. lost souls. Yeah. It's almost like I, I shouldn't be enjoying things. I shouldn't yeah. be praying that God would give me something that's just for me. Yeah. yeah. No. I, and because I, th- I think it's because of our failure to see God as a heavenly father. Mm. Maybe it's because our dads were not as good, or maybe you grew up in a um, bad home situation that you cannot see your father that way, that you can just walk up and talk to him and ask him for anything. So coming to God, our heavenly father, with personal relationship needs, it's Mm. like, really? Really? Boy, you should be glad you yeah. got all this. <laughs> you should be glad I give you I got yeah. a house over your head, a roof over your head, and clothes on your back. You, oh, oh, you want a you want a girlfriend? I guess you didn't appreciate being created. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Why don't you go in there and girlfriend them dishes? <laughs> <laughs> you can always tell if you're raised in the South because your parents will turn anything into a verb. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh man, I'm I'm hungry. You need to go hungry them dishes. <laughs> so you you said something. <laughs> you said something that uh that that kind of struck me and and I want to see if this is this is something that you, that you feel because you said you prayed for each of your kids. Yes. And I feel like looking at it zooming out, parents, especially Christian parents, almost have a hands-off approach. Yeah. to, yes. to their kids. We've seen that too. Um yes. their kids dating lives, I yep. guess. Or, or Well, it's it's sometimes it comes out of a place of frustration because you hear the bad stories like the parents were too involved in their kids' relationship lives. And so the kids were all just frustrated and they just, you know, they just had it. It it was just too much. And so then another group of parents will say, you know, I just don't want to make the same mistakes that they made. Right. And so I'm I'm not going to get involved in my kids' lives. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be there, supportive and helpful, but I'm not here to. So I don't know what to say. I'd rather try to help them, guide them, pray for them. If I see some glaring problems and really speak out instead of after the fact, well, honey, I didn't want to tell you that, but, you know, I knew this was going to happen. No, tell them and say, hey, there's something wrong here. Yeah. Or this young man is not the right one for you. God will send the right boy in your life. Yeah. Or a girl um, in your life. Depends on, you know, you're talking to your boy or your girl. Yeah. Some parents just either take a hands off and feel like I don't want to step into that area because that. But isn't that the most important? That's other what than I'm salvation. I was say it, you know, it, it makes me think of all the times we've we've sat and talked about uh, development and uh, in our in our series through the different generations. Right. Um, if you're looking at the teenage brain, yeah, the teenage brain um, develops in such a way where their capacity for emotion outpaces right. their capacity for logic and reasoning. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So through the teenage years, they still need 
parents to come along guide them and guide them and help them think because sometimes they think with their emotions and not their brain. It, and it's funny because a lot of those same parents will ha have no problem taking a hands-on approach in what sports they play or what colleges they yes. they, uh, yes. they apply to. Like they'll be like, "Hey, I'll I will decide what sports you play. I'll decide what college you right. But who you're going to spend the rest of your life with? Hey, something something uh, so you got to pick that like, one, man. Who you're going to be married to forever? Yeah, like. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to be involved in that decision for you. Like, yeah, and I'm going it's to help an, guide that. It's an unpopular job. Yeah, it's an unpopular job. You will not be loved for it. You may be resented, and it may be a resentment maybe for years and years. It, it it's not an unpopular. It's not a popular job. Well, it's funny because we look at people in the Bible who did arrange marriages for their kids, yeah. and we say, "Well, that was barbaric. We don't do that anymore." Well, I'm not for arranged marriages. I mean, I've come from that part of the world where they do have arranged marriages mm -hmm. and they have their benefits but if Christ is not in that picture mm -hmm. then I am not for them right so I hope that makes sense mm -hmm. if Christ is in that picture then yes you can say hey that's a godly Christian family let's see if we can talk to them and see if you know you want to if you can marry their son or their son can marry your daughter kind of thing but if not then it's based mostly on money and status and so, power. Well, so that's what actually, I, that actually led me into a question because I know you grew up in a part, do they still do arranged marriages? Oh, yes. In, in, uh -huh. So is, do the people getting Not married, as popular as it used to be, not as uh, uh, mainline as it used to be when I was growing up. Uh -huh. In the past 30 some years, things have changed, but they still have it. Mm. Tons, tons, is tons, it, tons, tons. Is it the parents are deciding and the kids go along with it or do the kids yeah. have a say in it at all? Kids do have a say, but how much depends on how educated the parents are, mm. how much depends on how, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The parents need to be a little bit more advanced, mm -hmm. <laughs> not old fashioned. Yeah. So is there, so there are, there would be situations where it's like the, the bride is like, Hey, I really don't want this, but mom and dad want it. So it's happening. Mm -hmm. That's, mm. that's common. Oh, you will marry this boy. Wow. It's good for the family. It's good for this and good for that. Wow. In time, they end up loving them or whatever, whatever. I get it. But, poof. <laughs> yeah. That's not a, not a great launching off point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and there are bad situations that happen. Mm. Uh, it makes for a very miserable marriage. It's horrible. People, lots and lots. I mean, I, countless are enduring their marriage. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not saying there are a lot of mar arranged marriages that don't that that are same situation no there are some who are wonderfully in love but then there are many um unspoken ones that yeah. are miserable well that's it i think that kind of leads into something that you and nicole have both said even on this show is that love you is a commitment yeah you know you have to commit to that person that you're with that's right like abraham arranged that marriage for his son mm -hmm. isaac mm -hmm. with uh with rebecca but then he had to make a commitment to her mm -hmm. And that commitment was for life, and of course, they 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 made it. Yeah, I even think about like um, who is it? Uh, Jacob and um, Rachel. And Rachel. Rachel. Yeah. Well, <laughs> poor guy. He was <laughs> he tried. duped duped into oh, marrying man. Rachel's older sister. What was it? Leah. Leah. Yeah. 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 <laughs> had to work for seven years, and then gets the wrong sister, and has to work for seven more years. It gets yeah. the right one. <laughs> That's like, a tough break. Fourteen yeah. years later, he's like, "Bro, I, I see a lot of, like a trick on sitcom." He's like, "Comes out, he's like, bro, you tricked me," and he's like, "Did I do that? Did I, Uncle Laban? Did I do that?" <laughs> well, that's what we do around here. Yeah. Didn't yeah. you know that the custom? You didn't know. This I mean, would be so. This would be so wrong if we gave you the younger daughter before the older one. I mean, don't you understand? Yeah, I thought you I thought you knew. I, I, I didn't know what was going on. I thought you knew that. Why, Why would you tell me that? Why did you tell me that? <laughs> tell me that first. But he still committed. He still made that commitment. You know what I mean? He did. I think that's, he did. What's, that's what's incredible about that story is that Jacob was like, you know what? This this shouldn't have happened, but I'm going to yeah. commit myself to and, working. Somewhere. And in our culture today, we can't overstress the importance of commitment because yes. marriages have become disposable. Right. That's yeah. right. It's just kind of like, oh, this one didn't work out. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll just get a divorce and try again. I told somebody this morning that when it comes to technology, when it comes to so many opportunities, the West is so far superior mm. to the East. But the one place that we are severely handicapped in the West is our home life. Mm. Our marriages. Wow. Yeah.
because it's broken. They're broken. Many of them are. I'm not saying every one of them, but many of them are. It it puts our young people, it puts our future at such a disadvantage. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that if you went through a broken home or a divorced home, or uh, you know, I'm not here to offend you. I'm just trying to tell you, using the names that people use now, broken home, divorced home, whatever you like, right? Um, that that you're not going to make it, right. or you are handicapped. No, not at all. What I am saying is, it. it doesn't help. Mm-hmm. It does not help. You can make it. You can do great things. Sometimes you'll do better things than even those who grew up in an intact home. I know that. Mm-hmm. But overall, overall, it's not good. Yeah. So commitment. Make commitment for life. Do what you can to make it work. I think you instilled that in in me and Ellie when we were when we were dating here and we did our premarital counseling. I remember you made the comment that it was like you know when Nicole and I got engaged. We decided early on that divorce wasn't an option. Mm-hmm. It's not on the table. So there's there's no way out of this marriage. And that helped us great deal. And and I can say almost me and Ellie have been married like eight on going in nine years now. Wow. That's helped us. That's been that long. Huh? Oh yeah. 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 And, and I, I remember that. I, I think with you it was it wasn't an offhand comment, but it was just talking. Yeah. But it stayed with me all these years mm-hmm. that no matter what happens, divorce isn't an option. Yeah. Right. Even if the worst should come. Yeah. Right. You know? And that's helped me. Make a commitment for life. That's right. So those are some some suggestions today. Uh, work on your marriage. Um, use Ephesians five twenty five as your model. As you know, Paul said, "Husbands love your wives, mm-hmm. just as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for her." That's right. Mm-hmm. So we as husbands should take the lead in showing love, no matter what's happening on the other side. You do what's right. That's right. That's right. So important for us. Such a great setup for Valentine's Day tomorrow too. So make sure, uh, make sure you go out and take care of your spouse on Valentine's Day, whatever that looks like for you. Whether it's flowers, whether it's chocolates, whether it's just a simple card telling you, telling them that you love them. And, just get it uh, at the gas station. You, you can, can get, get it at, it at the, the gas. gas station. Do no, sell cards at the gas station? <laughs> no. Well, maybe, maybe don't get it at the gas station. Gas station is now kind of like a like a luxury little resort. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Brennan, they really come a long way. Run in and let us know how today's episode helped you think about love, about your relationships, and about ultimately our relationship with Christ. I'm joking, by the way. Don't get your wife something at the gas station. I'm joking. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that shouldn't have to be said, but but don't shop at the gas station for a Valentine's <laughs> present. 252-582-5028 or visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Don't forget to partner with us financially on that same website. Be a part of what God is doing through the Clearview Today Show right here. Well, I also want to encourage you to visit MightyMuscadine.com. They're the sponsors of today's episode. Check out their line of products. Use the promo code today when you check out. That's T-O-D-A-Y. It's going to get you a discount and a portion of those proceeds are going to come right back here to the Clear Read Today Show. John, what's coming up tomorrow? Very, very special episode for Valentine's Day. You ever heard of the newlywed game? Once or twice. Well, guess what? We're going to be playing it. We're going to have three special guests. One of them is Dr. Shaw's wife. One of them is Ryan's wife. Yep. Oh, it's going to be my wife. Yep. Three guests. None, of us, person none of us are newlyweds. None of us are newlyweds, but no. we're going to be playing the newlywed game. I think I think this is something we're going to try to do every year on Valentine's Day. I took home the trophy last year. We're going to see who's, who takes it home this year. We'll see. I don't know. Join us tomorrow. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow on Clearview Today. Thank you.